Hello, hello, hello. This is the Vanilla JavaScript Podcast. I'm Chris Ferdinandi. Thanks so much for joining me. Today, I want to talk about web development and climate change. Earlier this summer, the Pacific Northwest of the United States recorded record temperatures, as well as Canada. Similarly, New England and the Northeast were being hit with a heat wave at the same time. This is not just a US problem, of course. Um, Jakabad in Pakistan is becoming so hot that it's at the extreme end of what humans can even survive and may soon become uninhabitable. And I'll drop some links in the show notes to articles on um, all of these different developments so you can dig deeper for yourself. But you're probably thinking, okay, Chris, what's that got to do with web development? Well, we're making it a lot worse. Jerry McGovern is the author of a book called Worldwide Waste. And in it, he talks about the role that the tech industry plays in global warming. Uh, from his description or overview of the book, he writes, digital is physical, digital is not green, digital costs the earth. Every time I download an email, I contribute to global warming. Every time I tweet, do a search, check a web page, I create pollution. Digital is physical. Those data centers are not in the cloud. They're on land in massive physical buildings, packed full of computers hungry for energy. It seems invisible. It seems cheap and free. It's not. What we do professionally has a huge environmental impact. Jerry puts some numbers to it. For example, 231 million trees would need to be planted to deal with the pollution caused as a result of the data U.S. citizens alone consumed in 2019. 16 million trees would need to be planted to offset the pollution caused by the estimated 1.9 trillion yearly searches on Google. 80% of all digital data is never accessed or used again after it's stored, according to a 2018 report by Active Archive Alliance. And 90% of all sensor data collected from Internet of Things devices is never used, according to IBM. Digital feels cheap and transient and it's making us wasteful as fuck. We are, as an industry, fueling a global crisis that will eventually affect us all. But first, it will affect the most vulnerable. This morning, or I should say a few weeks ago, I came across a really interesting and terrifying Twitter thread from climate activist Matthew Lewis. Uh, it was this morning when I recorded this. Uh, it's been a little bit of time since then. Um, about something called the wet bulb temperature. Wet bulb temperature is the temperature and relative humidity, and I'm quoting Matthew here, at which water stops evaporating off a wet thermometer bulb. If air is sufficiently humid, evaporation will no longer cool the bulb and it gets continuously hotter. This matters for humans because our bodies regulate heat via evaporation. Sweat glands carry heat from body to the skin surface where it evaporates, dissipating heat into the air. As long as you stay hydrated and take salt, salt is important, you can stay cool at high temps. So what does that have to do with you? Well, up until the last about 40 years, wet bulb temperatures were extremely rare on this planet, but that's over now. We're already seeing multiple wet bulb temperatures per year in multiple locations. By mid-century, parts of the southern U.S. will see weeks of wet bulbs every year. Near the end of the thread, Matthew addresses the coming humanitarian crisis that this is going to create as the places where a huge number of people live become literally uninhabitable. People with lots of disposable income can put off feeling the consequences of climate change for a lot longer than low-income folks. They can work indoors, they can stay comfortable with air conditioning, they can move somewhere else. And because of systemic racism and generations of white supremacy, Minorities are more severely impacted by climate change. Um, and I'm quoting now an article from um, the Boston Globe. Many of the city's heat islands are concentrated in lower income neighborhoods where fewer people have air conditioning or tree cover to keep their homes cool, said Reverend uh, Mariama White Hammond, the city's environmental chief. She and others noted that much of the disparity could be attributed to the city, and in this case, the city is Boston, uh, the city's history of racial inequality, in which banks redline certain neighborhoods, making it difficult for people of color to obtain mortgages and leaving those neighborhoods with less green space and other public investments. And this is a widespread thing, not just a problem in Boston. 
all over the U.S., um, cities that are primarily um, resided in by minorities have less tree cover um, and have temperatures that are dramatically hotter because trees provide shade, they absorb a lot of the heat, and they cool the areas where they're planted. And the thing is, modern web development is making this worse. Um, we are not single-handedly causing or fixing this. And by we, I mean web developers. Tackling climate change is going to take massive, concerted effort at a national and global scale. But we are absolutely, as an industry, making this worse. We need to stop treating data as cheap, disposable, and low impact. It's not. We need to stop building sites that are so big and energy intensive. And perhaps most importantly, we need to stop building things that encourage wasteful behavior. I wrote an article about all of this back in June. Um, and one of my readers, uh, Adam, sent back uh, an amazing list of uh, resources if you want to learn more about sustainable web development. So I will drop a link to all of those down in the show notes. Um, but they include a sustainable web manifesto, um, a calculator you can use to calculate how much carbon your websites actually emit and how they rank compared to other websites, and a book that I purchased and started reading that uh, so far is pretty damn good, uh, Sustainable Web Design from a Book Apart. But again, I'll drop links to all of this down in the show notes. So anyways, that's it for today. Thanks so much for listening. Um, if you want to finally master JavaScript, head over to vanillajsguides.com and check out my pocket guides and video courses. As a listener of the show, you can take 30% off with the code podcast at checkout. Uh, checkout rather. Um, my books put a really strong focus on using what's in the platform and minimizing how much code you ship down the line um, and actually need to run your websites. And um, depending on how many visitors the sites you build get, that can make a big difference in how much carbon emission they actually create. Um, so hopefully you find some of that useful. Anyways, I'll see you next time. Cheers.